Hey oh everybody, Haku here with my review for the season finale, episode 12, for Hoseki no Kuni. And uh, if, you're, if you're new for this series and haven't seen me review any other series, whenever I get to the finale, I always discuss the, I discuss the finale, give it a score and stuff like a usual review, but then I discuss the show as a whole a little bit and give the show as a whole a score and stuff. Uh, and sorry this is a few days late, of course, because it was Christmas weekend, I was super busy all weekend. Um, yeah, pretty much not even at home all day, every day, all weekend. So I couldn't do any videos, I'm sorry for that. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get into discussing this episode and then discussing the show as a whole. So starting off, we have Pod Paracha's Awakening. Uh, they've been asleep for over 200 years. Um, and I like when they wake up, they remember Foss as a child. Uh, we, I wish we actually kind of got to see a little bit more of that. We just got the one little cutaway gag. I wish we got to see more of Foss as a child and um, some of what things were like back then and some of Pod Paracha's memories. Uh, but either way, Rutil is down. As soon as they wake up, Rutil's like, ah, oh, yes, just collapses. Um, so Foss and Pod go out there and start talking, and uh, Foss tells them that she wants to talk to a Lunarian. Pod says that what they want is for Rutil to give up. They can't say that, they can't do anything, because it would be, like, not fair to Rutil after all the effort and time they put in, but she doesn't want to be that burden on Rutil anymore. Uh, then, either way, Pod go, goes unconscious again, perhaps even for 200 more years, and it's sad because Rutil got to miss this whole time with her. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Positives and negatives. Like, I like the character, but it's sad that we barely got to see any of them. Um, we have Zircon with Bortz. All the Zircon with Bortz stuff this episode was really funny. Uh, I like how just the first sequences we have, Bortz completely ignores Zircon and everything she does all day. Uh, and then when Zircon goes to talk to Foss and she gets psychotic, like, uh, Hey, give me some of that gold. I need some of that. And she has, like, psychotic face. And, uh... Foss is like, no, no, you've definitely lost it. Uh, but they end up having a really good talk, and I, uh, I like the depth of the conversation there. Uh, then Bortz, the next day out with Zircon, tells Zircon that her weakness is that she's too afraid of using, er, uh, of losing yellow, using yellow, <laughs> of losing yellow. So, uh, that's what holds her back from being better. She's so worried about protecting yellow that she isn't worried enough about just taking out the Lunarion or the Lunarian. And we cut away, we get to see some moments with two of my favorites. They were tied for number two in my list of favorite rocks. And my list of favorite rocks hasn't really changed pretty much. So I'd say what I said last episode were my favorites um, is the best overall. So uh, yeah, I'd say that's equal. Alexand if you didn't know the top five, Alexandrite was five. Fourth was Jade, I believe. And then I tied um, Rutil and Yellow Diamond at second because I didn't know which one I liked more. And then my favorite's Euclid's, but I don't know, Yellow Diamond and Euclid, er, and uh, Rutil both up there. But um, the Yellow Diamond and Rutil moments were so funny, I loved them. Um, then uh, beyond that we actually get to see Alex again, or Alexandrite, or Lexi, but Foss tells them to reteach her everything because she doesn't remember everything that she learned as a rock child. Um, but uh, Lexi just wants to do trivia, basically. Lunarian trivia. Uh, they talk about not understanding the Lunarian language, so they're not sure that they can talk. Um, and when asked why she does this, why she's so obsessed, it's not just to, uh, it's not just because she can't go out there and see them on her own or she goes crazy, but also because apparently her partner was Chrysoberyl, and Chrysoberyl was taken from her before Foss was born. So uh, Alexandrite studies the Lunarians almost sort of out of a sense of vengeance or maybe even hatred. So uh, I like that, again, we have that depth of character there. Um, Foss finally finds her Lunarian. She finally finds them, tries to interrogate them before Cinnabar ruins things. But before Cinnabar ruins things, it was really cool because like pupils came out in the Lunarian's eyes and it made a noise. And then of course, Cinnabar ruined things, but it left Foss to think, Oh my god, can they talk? Were they, was that about to try to talk? But it shows us as viewers we haven't ever seen that happen. So this is new to us too. This is shocking for us watching. Uh, so uh, yeah, don't know what the hell's going on there, but I like that they threw it in because it adds a whole bunch of mystery and intrigue that makes me excited for a second season. Um, 
So yeah, she tries to interrogate him. Cinnabar ruins things. Uh, Foss says she found Cinnabar a job. She wants her to help her find out the truth about the Lunarians and about the Master and about everything. Uh, but of course, at first Cinnabar's like, you said this was going to be a better job. How is this better? What part of that is better? It's just going to be me and you alone instead of just me alone. And then after a while, we have that sort of ten that tension in that conversation. And one of the greatest things about this scene is how the positions were completely flipped from when they met each other in the first episode, where, where Cinnabar was cold and didn't want any part of this, and Foss was the one, like, I don't want to say happy and energetic, but she was the emotive one, the one that was really trying to find a better way or something. And now it's switched around to Foss being the one who's cold and saying, you know, if that's the way it has to be, I have to do this my own way. And the emotive one being Cinnabar, who says, we need to, like, we need, it needs to be a better job. I am sick of being alone, but I have no other choice. And she's sort of uh, stuck in that place. So uh, I love that the positions have totally shifted from the beginning of the season to the end of the season and that it was shown so well. But at the end, Cinnabar does say, before we cut away from her, well, if you're talking about just teaming up, and then we sort of have that hint again for next season. Um, then we get a beautiful OST while we see all the different characters and what they're doing here, uh, whether it's Obsidian making weapons, Red Barrel making clothes, um, Diamond playing with the plush or whatever, Alexandrite in her little study, and for some reason Yellow Diamond was always laying down in the background in the study. Um, so we got to see all them with a really great OST, and then this really beautifully well done cliffhanger, I hate cliffhanger innings, but I do like the art behind this, where Foss is walking past the pond and we see Foss from episode one at the pond and that sort of fades away into dust as the current Foss walks by to go meet the master who um, confronts her and then it ends. And we have an orchestral version of the opening. The opening is already a great song. The animation for the opening at the beginning of each episode has been kind of like, eh, whatever. I kind of wish it was a little more exciting, like the PV that used the opening song was really great. Um, but I love the way that the song sounds. I think it's a great song, but to have the orchestral version, that was great too. I absolutely love that. Uh, just having another version of the song. So, uh, yeah, I thought that for this episode, it was great, both two things, great character development and great setting up and hinting at a ton of new things for the future stories in just such a short time. Because in just one episode, we sort of did a lot for Bortz and Zircon and a bunch of different characters for Podparacha, Rutil, Foss, especially Foss and Cinnabar, of course. Uh, so we got all this great character development, and we also got things like the Lunarians maybe being able to speak, um, not knowing about their language, uh, whatever the Master and Foss are meeting about, the potential Foss-Cinnabar team-ups. Uh, we get so many hints at things for the future um, that just set us up so well for uh, second season coming. Um, and uh, the episode, of course, artistically beautiful like every week. Uh, like I said, that last sequence is probably my favorite of the episode. Uh, but it was a good it was a good episode, so it's it's hard to say, but I think the last sequence is probably the one that'll stick with me most, that I like the most. And as a score, I don't want to quite give it a perfect score, but it was extremely good, so 9.75 character shifts out of 10. Uh, just seeing the difference between Foss at the beginning of the show to now. Um, so let's talk about the show just a little bit. I think for the show, just talking about production quality, it showed off some of the best 3D CG I think I've seen for a series that was basically all 3D CG. And it shows that it doesn't have to be bad. It can be really, really artistically well done. Some of the camera angles they used in sequences, like Diamond sneaking around when she was fighting Shiro, the stealth scenes with her, um, a lot of the running scenes and fight scenes early in the season, uh, some of the stuff like uh, Foss's hallucinations of Alexandrite, and then the, even the scene at the end now when the uh, old Foss faded away into the new Foss. There were so many really, really good-looking scenes, so many just scenes that show that you can make something look really artistically well done with 3D CG. 
Um, and it paired a great story to go along with that. The things I loved about the story was mostly the setting and the mystery involved in it, where this isn't anything like the normal human world we know. It's completely changed in the years since humanity has faded away. Uh, and just starting from scratch with them living there and us not knowing anything, and then slowly over the course of the series we kind of find out more about the rock people and everything. But even then, there is so much that they as characters don't know, and thus even more that we as people watching don't know. And the, the uh, mysterious nature of the setting is just so great. Uh, so yeah. Also, even if I don't always like the way that the characters were beaten down and changed, there was great character development and change throughout the season. Uh, so that, again, is another big plus for it. Uh, for the series as a whole, I think it was, like I said, great in so many ways. Production quality, story. Uh, one of the better shows, possibly maybe my third favorite this season overall. Uh, see, I'd give it 9.5. At least, yeah, 9.5 um, rocks out of 10. I really, really enjoyed this show, and I hope you did as well. Um, coming later this week, possibly in a few days, I'll be doing a video where I'm going to have up on the screen all the descriptions and titles and all that for all the shows that are airing next season, and I'll have a face cam for me up in the corner. And I'll go through that for a while, and I'll discuss each of the different shows, um, well, I mean, not super, super long-winded or anything. I'll go through each of the shows real quick. Uh, there are 15 I'm thinking about watching, uh, with three maybes, and I'll discuss them and what I'm thinking of them. And uh, I'm only going to review maybe one or two shows next season, because I want to uh, sort of free up my schedule a little bit more to post sort of longer-term videos, I guess. Or I want to just post some different videos maybe some reviews of some older anime that I haven't got around to watching yet. Uh, I'd like to do that. Um, so I'm only going to uh, review one or two um, for next season, but I'm going to do that video so that you can comment down there and we can discuss, me and all of you, um, we can discuss what you think I should watch if you have any suggestions, What you, because the stuff I'm watching I can always discuss in the hot Q&As even if I'm... Um, not reviewing it week to week. I can still discuss it with you all in some form. Um, so you can help decide what I watch and help decide which of that I review. At the end of the day I'm going to review whichever two or whatever I think are best for reviewing. And of course I'm going to continue reviewing Mahotsuka and Naomi in One Piece because they're both continuing on. Um, so at the end of the day I'm going to choose, but of course what you say you would watch heavily, heavily affects that. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of um, this series, what you thought of my thoughts on it, all that, what you thought of the um, finale and all that. Um, subscribe for more. Uh, if there's a second season of this, I'm definitely covering it. I, I asked last week and most of you said don't read the manga, be surprised for season two. So I'm not going to read the manga, I'm, I'm going to hold off so that I can go in blind and be completely surprised by what happens in season two. So uh, if slash when there's a season two, because the way they set things up, it seems like there's going to be, uh, and it got pretty popular, so I think the odds are that money-wise, studios would be like, yeah, it's worth the season two. Um, so yeah, I'll be reviewing that, but even without that, there's a lot more anime, manga, light novels, and stuff on the channel. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, like I said, just uh, subscribe for that. Um, follow on Twitter if you want, and I'll try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channels. Uh, and if you want a link to our Discord server to talk with me, more of us there, just ask and I'll give you a link. We can all talk there. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.